how is it that you see the future of this world and what is, what is the kind of responsibility you want to take um, for this world? My responsibility will be to talk and never stop talking and never stop and never begin to think, oh, nothing can change. Mm -hmm. It will be worse and worse. Okay. Mm -mm. The future. Who is the future then? Uh, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, okay, like, I don't know, again, uh, but what I'd like to, all of us, like all, all of us to achieve somehow, is the world in which, like, debates like this, or debates with other people, are still relevant and possible. Yes, because there comes, like, what history taught us is that there are moments in history were round tables and were like public debates, were, pe were like simply no longer possible and people no, no longer read books or <coughs> articles. So the idea like what the word I would like it to be is that I'd like the word to preserve, preserve its, this quality of being able to read, discuss, appreciate what's happening around, and like find out that like the magic mountain, like the building magic mountain, is actually like in the people around, in a sense. I don't think that um, people committed to a life of, an, of ideas are an extinct or an extinct species are becoming extinct. I think that there are a lot of people like this. I don't think that we're um, such miracles. And what I want is to be, to live a life dedicated to humanism and to those, to the ideals to which Nexus is dedicated, not in a self-conscious way and not sort of defensive because I think that we're a dying breed, but proudly, um, and to represent those values in a way that makes it clear to anybody else who feels that way um, that this is, a, this is a mission we can take on together. I think we are in a snowstorm right now. Yes, exactly. <laughs> right? And that's really to come back to the Zauberberg. I think uh, I really hope us to find the way out of the sanatorium, you know, <laughs> and not spend so many years there. <laughs> and um, between the two extreme positions, as I think Eduardo said it this morning, that there's so many shades in between, which are much more interesting, much closer to life. And I want us to look at these shades between the extreme positions that we heard this morning and to actually find a way out of this, I consider it a bit of a paralysis that we're in. Well, you, you said before that when we're talking about the climate crisis that the agenda needs to be broadened, but I just want to say that um, I think for young people, being faced with the idea that humanity as we know it might be coming to an end in their lifetime and they won't have any food to eat or air to breathe or anywhere to live. I think there's nothing more terrifying than that. So all of the other issues are all so very important, but there's really nothing more globally unifying than the end of the planet and the end of the world. And, and I think that we should all be constantly using all of our skills and resources and platforms to be as involved as we can, whether we want to or not, because we have to. That's really all that matters, is really coming up with solutions and, and not just talking about it, but offering tangible solutions and discussing them and pushing for them and also taking care of each other and being collaborating and being compassionate and being loving and kind to each other and working together. So love will save the world yes. and action. <laughs> and action. Uh, you're the fun one. Um, I think um, uh, the will, common- will, will it be after the Arab Spring and Arab Summer? <laughs> <laughs> I think that I've learned that there is no predicting anything <laughs> these days, but I think, um, what I really appreciate is having this kind of interdisciplinary space to talk to people who are coming from very different types of movements, very different types of disciplines, and I think that doesn't happen enough. So I think, you know, I think the climate crisis and the financial crisis, I think, have both told us similar things, which is that people need to think about the economy in different ways. It's not just economists. It's actually how to... Um, think collectively, collective intelligence about the impact of these institutions for all of us. 
And so uh, there's too much sort of, you know, doctors talking to themselves, economists talking to themselves, engineers or social activists, you know, having this kind of interdisciplinary space to actually talk about these problems and challenges from different perspectives is really useful. Uh, and I think also having a more holistic uh, approach to our well-being, I think, is really important. I think you know, as you were mentioning in the beginning, you know, maybe 20 years ago, the idea of economic uh, progress was the only thing, and this vision of uh, humans as sort of economic man was, you know, dominant. And now all of this, you know, climate change activists and others are calling this into question. And I think we need to have a more sort of holistic understanding of our well-being, what we need. Uh, you know, we need an economy that also addresses the needs of society and also doesn't destroy society and the planet.